Hey there, welcome back to Manatic Stringworks. Glad to have you here. Just want to take a, the time to wish everyone a happy new year and the best of the holidays. Please remember to like and subscribe for more videos. I enjoy making them. So today, we have this guitar in this Fender case. <laughs> it's a 2017 Fender Telecaster made in the U.S. of A. This is a local musician's guitar, he uses it all the time, and he's asking me to put some locking tuners on it, and just give it a quick look, you know, check the setup, etc. So, he plays it hard, but a telly is made for that, it'll last, uh, well, pretty much last forever. All right, so let's uh, take this out of the case. We'll bring it into the workshop. And we won't forget those locking tuners. We'll bring those in as well. So I like to check the electronics, make sure everything's working okay. Check the pickup selector. A little bit of scratchiness, but after turning the knobs around a few times, that disappeared. So everything seems to be working well with the tap test. No issues with the wiring. So these are the tuners. They're Fender Standard Locking Tuners. They're nice. I put these on a lot of guitars. Simple, easy DIY thing to do as well. They're usually just a straight swap out. I haven't run into too many issues with them. So just to compare, uh, well, compare the, there are three taller ones and three shorter ones, right? So three taller posts, three shorter posts. And we'll see when we install them or we put them. But you do have to be mindful of that. You certainly don't want to mix them up, right? So there's the tuner that came on the guitar. I think that's called a tombstone or headstone uh, tuning key. And there is the one, there are the ones on the locking tuner. So they're more of that vintage, a little bit more vintage style, little oval. Nice. All right, so I'm gonna take off one of the tuners. So the six string. And we're going to keep these uh, strings, uh, the player just put these on like last week, so they're still in good shape. Plus it's a locking tuner, we can snip them off and change it out really quick afterwards if we need to. So I'm just going to check one, I always do, I mean I'm 99.9% .9 sure it will fit just fine. So 10 millimeter wrench, I love these little thin Stumac wrenches. I'll just get that started, get it off. So there's a bushing, a threaded bushing, then you have the washer and the nut. So the nut and the bushing are like one piece, like a barrel. It's threaded, and then you have the washer. So there's the old, here's the new. You'll notice those little locating pins on the back of the tuning machine body. So I'll flip this over. There are the holes. So you just have to line up those pins in the hole. That prevents the tuning machine from spinning around as you're tightening it up. Instead of a screw or screws in the back. So we just put in the bushing and the washer and tighten it up. So just hand tighten, you know, nothing crazy. It doesn't have to squeeze you know, compress the wood like nuts, you know, just tighten it up. So you can use a 10 millimeter socket too. I've got this little flat uh, ratchet, which is kind of cool. But uh, I just use that to break, you know, break the seal a bit. And then just by hand with the socket, you can just loosen them up. I'll just go down the line and change them out one by one. 
This the locking tuners come with their own washer and bushing, new bushing. So I'm just using those, of course. And then once you've hand tightened it, you can just use the wrench. So that's all six of them finished up pretty quick. And there you go, there you can see how the posts are different heights, right? So the first, second, and third string have the low posts, the fourth, fifth, and sixth have the higher posts. And that's to help with the break angle. So it keeps the string down, using the string tree as well for the first and second strings. And then I'll just loosen up the locking wheels on the back of the tuning machine. That way we can slide the string in when we get around to that. All right, before we restring it, I'm just gonna clean the frets. The fret erasers, love these things. They do a great job of cleaning and a light polish. Doesn't take long. I actually clean these with another eraser and uh, it actually clean them up nicely. So extend the life of them. And just clean the fretboard. I've used simple green here, but any mild detergent, soap and water, you know, will work just fine. Obviously you don't let any liquid sit around too long, but just, you know, wipe it up, clean it up. Give it a quick check of the frets, they're fine too. Nothing sharp. So the old pencil lead in the nut slot lube trick, right? <laughs> that seems to work fine. And then I'll finish up the frets using some uh, 4 aught steel wool and just this little fret protector here, a metal fret protector. Gives a nice little polish without going crazy like with a polishing wheel or anything like that. It's nice to f play with smooth frets, that's for sure. I always have a couple of brushes around. Find them super handy to clean into little cracks and areas. And let's have a look. Nice and shiny, nice and smooth. Good. You should try and do this every, uh, if not, not every time you change your strings maybe, but certainly uh, every second time, third time maybe. All right, so just to, I saw this little trick online, which was kind of cool, and I'll put a link to the video below in the description, but if you line up your tuning post holes, you know, in the one, two, three, four, five, six o'clock position, matching the string. So one first string would be one o'clock, second string, two o'clock. So here I'm starting with the six string, so six o'clock. So imagine the clock is, you know, the, the top of the headstock is 12 noon. So six o'clock would be straight down, right? So you see how it's straight down in line with the nut. Put the string through, don't pull it super tight, just pull it so it's through there, but not loose, and then you can start tightening it up. And then you know, imagine five o'clock, do that for the five string, you know, approximately, but you know, try and line them up. And it just gives you enough tension when you start to tune it up. And if you have a different way of doing it, as works for you, that's awesome. <laughs> There's no one right way to do a lot of this stuff on guitars. It's a lot of experience. It's what you do, you know, what someone's shown you. So find a way that works. And if it doesn't work, you know, try something different, right? Nothing stopping you from stringing it up a little differently. So down the line, and again, just lining up, you know, each of the, an easy way to remember it is Every string, first string is one o'clock, second string is two o'clock, like we see here, third string three o'clock. So that, that just makes it easy. I thought that was a pretty smart way to, to think about it. Again, have a look at the link to the video in the description below. It's uh, J. Leonard J. It's his channel. And it's his suggestion, suggested method.
All right, so we'll get the first string on, one o'clock, and then we'll tune up the guitar. Just trim off those strings. I like to leave a little bit there, not tight, tight to the post. Just so if you had to do something with the string, you could grab it with a pair of needle nose pliers. If you trim them really tight, you're done. You'll never be able to do anything with it. So just wanted to just point out the break angle. So that's why the posts go lower, right? Or lower on the first three strings. It helps with the break angle. Of course, you have a string tree with fenders on the first and second string. I tried just for fun, just not putting the string under the string tree, and I wasn't really happy with the break angle, even with the shorter tuning posts. So just left those um, the first and second string under the string tree. All right, well, if you have the packaging, why not put the old tuners back in that packaging? Sometimes you just get them loose in a bag, whatever. But it's good to keep everything together if you want to reuse them on another guitar or maybe on sell them. You know, Kijiji or eBay or something like that. Facebook Marketplace. And before I forget where I put them, I'll just throw them back in the case. <laughs> So when the guitar came in, I did notice that the strap lock button was loose at the top of the boat. So we'll fix that. It just keeps turning and turning. So I'll, I'll pull that out, unscrew it. Lots of different ways to sort of do this, but simply put. Uh, so I just happen to have a little container of toothpicks, trim off the end. You can use hardwood if you have, it's preferable I guess, hardwood. And then use some wood glue. I don't use CA glue for this, I like to use wood glue. I mean it takes a little longer to set up of course, but it's a better bond. So put in enough that you're filling the hole as well and it's catching you know your toothpick but don't not too much that it's just squeezing out so after a little while about half an hour trim it off the glue's not quite 100 percent set yet which is good so i just start a little hole three thirty seconds drill and then i'm going to screw in the strap lock and i find what happens is because the glue isn't a hundred percent set yet it actually is going to set around the screw and it seems to hold better so that's my little trick these will come loose especially if you're using your guitar a lot right you're gigging a lot you know changing guitars undoing your strap it'll uh, it, they will come loose so you do have to fix them from time to time all right so let's just check the setup the player was happy with the guitar before, so we really haven't changed anything other than the tuners. So neck relief should be between 10 and 12 thousandths at the seventh fret, fret, sorry, right around there. This one was nice, right at 10. You just feel it scraping the 10 thousandths, so nice. No buzzing when I play the open string, so that neck relief uh, seems to work just fine. Now the string height on this guitar is about 564, which uh, some people think is high, but honestly, I find that 564 is a better height for most people than 464, uh, because especially someone who's playing a lot, gigging, cover band, you know, you're playing hard, you're having a lot of fun out there. When it's really low, you know, you're strumming and whacking the guitar, it's, it's better to have a little higher action. And 564 is not high, really. Though nut action at the first fret should be between 18 and 22 thousandths. This guitar happened to be about 18, which is pretty low out of the factory. This is nothing's ever been done to this, so that's nice. No buzzing. Then I'll just finish up the setup by adjusting the 
pickup height. So one eighth under the string and the top of the pickup on the bass side and three thirty seconds on the treble side. Just a quick note, I did check the intonation and it was fine. So I didn't adjust that or film that. But yeah, so adjust the pickups. Again, that's a starting point. Every guitar is a little different. You, know, you change the strings, you go to a thicker gauge, you might need to drop the pickups down. Go to a thinner gauge, you might need to raise them up. Depends how you play, where you play. You know, do you play near the bridge? Do you play near the neck, in the middle? But start there and, and adjust them yourselves. All right, that's it. So thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe for more videos. I enjoy making them. Your comments are interesting, fun, appreciative, so I like that. Have a great new year. We'll see you in January. Take care. Stay safe. Bye for now.